previously on Heiner Builds Your Ride Special. We have finished the sound deadening. It takes roughly a day. Want to hear this? There's almost no resonance to that anymore. The guys from SWAT have recommended these shock absorbers. The ride is so much better. We pre-design everything in CAD. Good day, fellow four-wheel drive enthusiasts, Heiner here. Our last adventure took us to SWAT where the 76 series got a new suspension, new steering damper and a heavy-duty drag link. After that, armed with cutting-edge CAD 3D software, we meticulously craft a blueprint for the interior. This was no ordinary design, it was a vision brought to life. Also, we put two layers of sound deadening into the car, which is absolute game changer. We changed the windscreen, we pre-run some cables and we installed the speakers and the head unit. Buckle up because we're about to delve deep into the riveting saga of our 76 series transformation. If you've been riding shotgun on this journey, you're in for a treat as we break down the nitty gritty of our latest mods. Fast forward to today, we're installing a third seat. We didn't film the process, but the craftsmen at Vespa Wenquip worked their magic, installing a tech-safe seat strategically placed in the middle. This is the before. And this is the after. It's a foldable armrest with cup holders, versatile and also stylish. Next. Back in the workshop, safety took precedence. Bonnet struts were added, not just for ease of access, but for that extra layer of safety. Now onto the hands-on work. The old snorkel out, side steps gracefully retired, and it was a three-person job to take the old bull bar off. The headlights went out and a refreshing blast with a portable wind blower left the front side looking sleek and ready for the next chapter. We have taken the front apart now. So as you can see, bull bars off, the lights are out, the lights were really faded. So we thought we don't polish them. I've tried polishing headlights before, it just it works for three months and then it's back to where it was before. So we put new headlights in and we've removed this quite early in the build now because we don't have to move the vehicle anymore. Reason for that is such easy access, so easy to work on now all the way around here, much rather than having the bull bar in the way and having to stand back a fair bit. So if you do all this work to a car, it's a good idea to remove most of the pieces to have easy access. It will speed up the whole installation process. The old mirrors, the clear view mirrors that were quite dated, they have disappeared now and we've put the MSA mirrors on there. I love these because you can flip them over like that. You've got another indicator in there. They come with an electric kit so we got electric mirrors on these now and once the door is closed you can also pull them out like that flip them out like that and they're really good for towing that way. Really good product these things. We still have to cover up some holes because as, as you can see the Land Cruiser badge was here before but all of this will later on get covered with a vinyl wrap anyway. Also we've already put bonnet struts in here. This is quite important for people that aren't the tallest. Usually it's quite easy at least for me to put this bit in but if you're about this size it's a lot harder so bonnet struts are really cool for that because then you don't have to use one arm to climb one arm to keep this up and then try to use your third arm to put the bit in bonnet struts are quite easy for that and quite safe we've also got a new windscreen installed the other one was really chipped 
and it was leaking a little bit as well. And because it was leaking, it created some problems with the mobilizer and so on and so forth. So new windscreen, and we still have to check the wiring behind the dash a bit, because I think there might be some corrosion behind the dash, but we'll get to that later. We've also put uh, a new mirror in, which isn't a mirror anymore, but that's our reverse camera. So the whole hood lining still needs to be cleaned afterwards. And what we do is we put a ram mount in here. And then to that, we mount the rear view mirror, which is nothing but just a big monitor. And the camera will be on the back of the vehicle because once this is loaded, you won't be able to see a lot out of the rear window anymore. And this camera will just come on with accessories and you can see out the back of the car through the screen. Uh, we've also put new door pockets in. These have come in from cruiser consoles. Uh, there's some Alpine speakers that we put in there. Alpine stereo. This will also have a reverse camera connected to it, which is on the tow ball. So when you're reversing, you can see here uh, how to hook up your trailer. The seat has gone in already. We get into more detail later. It's a very tiny seat. So the MSA mirrors, they come with a switch that looks almost identical to the factory Toyota switch. So there was just a blank in here before that was being used for the old brake controller. Now we can adjust our MSA mirrors through this. Looks very factory. I love it. Great product. As part of the electric build, because we do a lot of things at the same time now, we've already pre-run a lot of cables. The idea is a 12 core to the roof, then we run a 12 core to the dash. So that way we can run all our lights, solar, tent power, front light bar, all through one 12 core. And then we do the same thing to the dash, so all our switches can hook up to a 12 core there as well. There's a charge cable and there's other cables in here as well, because this here is going to be the area for the electrics. The electric compartment will be sitting right here. Pretty much here we'll have the DC hub and the relay hub. You'll see a bit later, but we've already pre-run all these cables so that the vehicle can go back together. The interior fit out can go in and then we just have to terminate the cables where they are. You can see under the dash here as well. See all of this, these are all pre-run cables from uh, the stereo installation, uh, tow pro installation and also our upgraded wiring to the doors for the central locking that we fixed up. And as you can see as part of the exterior we've taken the side steps off because we'll have proper heavy duty side steps on here from off-road animal, same as the bull bar and the brush bars for side impact protection. Enter the eagerly anticipated front end parts of the 76 series, a bundle of excitement featuring new bull bars, side steps and more. After that, the battery, the powerhouse of any expedition, got a major upgrade. Jono did the installation of a get home safe setup, a main battery and a trusty backup. I think we have a new employee here. <laughs> <laughs> I can finally do some work again. After doing quotes with clients, it was my time to get hands on with the tools again. Cabling inside the dash, became my canvas, a nostalgic to my apprentice days. The following day, Jono took the wheels off and cleaned the wheel hubs. We suspected a leak, but it was just some excess grease. Moving on to the next one. Now new side steps on each side, enhancing the 76 series rugged appeal. After we finished with that, over the weekend we embarked on the installation of new headlights and the bull bar. A minor hiccup, the record button forgot to clock in for duty, but before and after video captured the transformation. This is the before 
and this is the after. Afterwards, new horns, new alternator, GME aerial and other essential parts found their home to the front end overhaul. Now with the exterior looking sharp, the interior aluminium parts for the 76 series fit out made their grand entrance. The aluminium fit out pieces were like a jigsaw puzzle. Assembled inside the 76 series, aligned perfectly with our 3D CAD design. Our excitement hit fever pitches as Andrew from Fox Overland joined the party. He is impressed with the interior and made a little video about it with me. Satisfaction level soared and with everything in place, it was time for the next step, powder coating. So as you can see, the interior is assembled and in. This is pre-powder coating and because this is a prototype, we've just test fitted it to see if the computer design actually matched the design in the car and if it fits, but it seems like it does. So we'll have our Egan products here, Relay Hub, DC Hub. This is the electric box. There's a really big drawer going in here with a table underneath, two drawers on that side and an upright fridge right there. This should be good. I'm excited about this. And charge station where you can put your phone and then chargers in the side. Very nice. I'm happy with that. Let's have a look at the back. Yeah, so really big drawer here for big stuff. And then two drawers here and probably a water tank there. We weren't quite sure how that space would actually look later on. Very nice. And then we got some storage here and this will be an 85 liter upright fridge. That way we save weight because we don't need a fridge slide, but you still get full access to it. On the weekend, we've also managed to put the boba on. It's not fastened yet. It still needs to be height adjusted. We put the new lights in here as well. And we use different globes. We are not using the normal H4 globes. We use the JW speaker H4 direct replacement globes. The cool thing about them is they've got a slightly higher light temperature than the spotties. So as soon as you switch from spotties, to your normal globes, you don't get this moment of complete blindness because your eyes have to adjust because you move up in light temperature. There's no adjustment period at all and you don't have to drive blind for two or three seconds when, you, when your eyes are trying to adjust from spotties to low beam. What we've also done is do a bit more work on the inside. As you can see, all the cables have disappeared that were in here. Switch panel is in, Topro is in, air compressor wiring is in, spotty wiring is in, the switch is still gonna change. Uh, cruise control is in, we're just missing the cover here. The stereo is in, it's just missing the subwoofer and the panel here and then we're close to completion in the front. Mirrors are in as well. Love this control panel. Haven't used it yet because we haven't hooked it up yet. Things are moving along. The interior embarked on a journey to the powder coating process and then a few days later, the interior returned to our workshop, flaunting a flawless powder coating finish that we eagerly anticipated. But before fitting them back in, I took charge of finalizing the front dash cable setup. Luke and Jono fine-tuned the remaining bits up front and the much-anticipated laser lamps Sentinel 9-inch spotlights were gracefully integrated. The excitement continued as we received a special delivery, the Bush Company equipment for our rooftop tent and awning. The next morning, it was back to business at 8 a.m. It's time to install all the interiors inside the 76 series. 
Now let's talk tech. Red Arc products took center stage as we geared up to accompany our Egan DC hub. Now have a look at the Red Arc lineup. We have got their BCDC 1225 core, the Manager 30 with the Red Vision display, 2000 watt inverter with a remote fold. We have also got the 300 watt Red Arc solar blanket and their 200 watt square roof solar panel. And all of that will be connected to the 200 amp hour Amtron lithium battery. This should make for an awesome electric setup. Next, the Bush Company tent, lifted with a forklift, made its grand entrance into our workshop. The Bush Company tent! Yep, just in time! Unboxing the gear, including the Bush Company AX27 rooftop tent, was like unwrapping Christmas presents. The basic setup commenced, including the installation of the Maxtrax holder, solar panel and a laser light bar up front. We are in the last week of our 76 series build project, at least of stage one, where we have to get it to go. At the moment, I'm mounting the underfloor water tank. This is the filler for it. It will sit here later on, so you can fill up the tank under the floor. We have managed to now put the bull bar on, the Safari Air Max snorkel is on, Laser lamps, Sentinel 9 inch driving lights are fitted, and also the Linear 18 is fitted into the off road Animal Toro bull bar. I really like these bars, and I've already had test drive with the car. It's phenomenal the light output that we get from here. Uh, all the under bonnet work electrically is finished. We've got our jump start battery in here for the get home safe option. The Red Arc SBI-12 control solenoid is there with the override switch. We have used these cool new battery studs, uh, sorry, battery clamps, and we can add two cables to it. And they are M8, so the factory wiring can go on one side and then our accessory wiring can go on the other side. We're using our fabrication brackets here for the twin MIDI fuse holders. Still fuse is missing. The only thing that's running so far is the extra fuse box on that side. We've put the factory Toyota accessory fuse box in here. That's running all our driving lights. And the older style one that was in the car already, that is running the rear view mirror camera. It is running our electric MSA mirrors. These are quite cool because you can fold them like that and pull them out when you're actually towing. And because this is a workmate, it had manual mirrors. Now it's got electric mirrors, which I think is a must. And they integrate indicators into the mirrors, which is a safety thing that I think is great. We've also got the two-way mounted in there. See the aerial is on the bull bar. The Tow Pro is installed. Rhea Anderson is installed. Stereo is installed. We've got an Alpine head unit, Alpine door pots and speakers, and Alpine subwoofer under the seat. Our, our third seat is in. Even though as a full grown adult, you don't want to be sitting on it, but it's very nice as an armrest. And then you can sit a kid up to 12 years in here. Very uncomfortably, I think. But if it's just for a two or three hour drive, I think it will be fine. Uh, we've also, this is the handpiece of uh, the XIS370. Then we've got the battery, over, battery override switch here. That doesn't work at the moment because it's disconnected. That's correct. Uh, water heater switch. Uh, the work light switches are here. And we've also fitted an aftermarket cruise control system from PVS, which is working very well. I was quite surprised. It's better than the one in my Hilux. 
Uh, we've also got, as you can see on the side of the dash there, we've got our extra USB outlets. And we've got them on this side here as well. And some things have happened in the back already. Let me show you. So one part of the drawer system is fitted. The rear part. We have got two decent sized drawers here. And then the monster size drawer here. These are prototypes and we have found they're slightly interfering and rubbing. As you do get that with prototypes. Unfortunately, I'll have to make that wear away over time. But we know where to work on the tolerances. And another cool feature here. The table that comes out. You have your chopping board here. All sorts of things in here. You can put another board on here. So you got a little bit more storage area when you're cooking. National Lunar Light here for cooking. Or you can just do it. With the table in. And you have your chopping board here. I think this is going to be quite nice. Can't wait. But now we have to mount the fridge surround and the electric cabinet, which is there. We've already got our Egan boards mounted in here. And this is going to be for water, heater, batteries, air compressor, and so on and so forth. But first of all, I got to get this water tank here. This will be our drink water tank that needs to go underneath the car. And I think it's going to interfere with the suspension that we've got in there. So I'll probably have to relocate that as well. So plenty to do for the rest of the day. Oh, and just in case you have missed it, this is the tent that's going to go on. We have to wire that up as well. It's the Bush Company AX27. I'll have a 270 degree awning on it, solar on the roof lights throughout i can't wait the team worked tirelessly fitting the interior until late into the night, marking the end of a productive day. The next morning, it was back to business at 8 a.m. We installed the Bushman 85 liter fridge and the Travel Buddy Marine oven. I delved back into the intricate world of electrics and I was installing the Red Arc products, including the Manager 30, BCDC Core, Inverter, ARB Twin Piston Compressor, and the TVMS screen for the Manager 30. Today, Henry joined the team to assist Luke in finishing up the cabling for the work lights and the light bar on top of the rooftop tent. Our 76 series build is in full motion. The drawers are in. We had a long night, Luke and I, fitting these in. They all fit. We had to drill a few extra holes as it goes with prototyping. We've learned a lot, a lot that we can do better in the future, but this is what this is for. It's practice so that we know how to do these things properly, but it's still come up really nicely. We've got the 2000 watt Red Arc inverter in here already. Manager 30 is in there, BCDC Core 25. There's the Egan Relay Hub, Egan DC Hub there. Uh, then we've got a twin piston compressor and an air tank with the outlet. This is going to be a charge station. 
And then towards the back here, we have got uh, the drawers in. It's quite a big drawer here. You got light here, it's a National Lunar Light. It's the camera for the rear view mirror. Uh, the water heater will be sitting on that face plate there. And then really cool on this side here, we've already got the fridge in. That's an 85 liter upright and it opens quite nicely that way. We'll even have a little freezer in here for ice or whatever else might be. And the cool thing is the door opens far enough so you can even take this all the way in and out. Quite important if you have to clean it from time to time. And then down here, we've got a travel buddy. And this will also be kitchen storage area so you can put big things in here at the same time, pots and pans or whatever else, little canvas bags to organize the area. And then over here, we are working on the rooftop tent at the moment. So Luke and Henry are here with me and we're putting a 200 watt Red Arc solar panel on there. This is the new Laser Lamps Linear 36 Elite, which has got double the light output than the old Linear 36. This should be really cool on the roof. And then over here, we'll have left hand and right hand side work light. Also Laser Lamps Utility 25 with the orange slash yellow, amber, whatever you want to call it, cover on it. This is a Bush Company rooftop tent. All the brackets are supplied by Bush Company as well, including the Max Trex holder. We've got a shovel holder on the side here. And then we're just fitting a 270 awning also from Bush Company on the other side. Yeah, we better keep going. Simultaneously, Loop began the water heater installation, integrating the six liter Aquinas water heater into the 76 series. Henry was still hard at work at cabling the rooftop tent, but he helped install the 270 XT Bush Company awning on the side of the rooftop tent with their supplied brackets. Work continued long into the night with the team putting in every ounce of effort to make sure we met the deadline for Friday so the vehicle could go on its first trip. Fast forward to the next day. I focused on finalizing the electric install while Luke took charge of installing the Egan water hub on the side of the drawers. This is only a temporary install to get it out on its first trip. We haven't got the gull wings and the gull wing boxes yet where the water hub will be installed later. The rooftop tent was officially finished and it was time to install the mounting brackets onto the vehicle. Luke and Henry seamlessly executed the installation, showcasing their skills in handling the forklift to carry the rooftop tent onto the 76 series. 
The excitement was palpable as the rooftop tent took its rightful place atop the 76 series. What a day. What's the next step? <laughs> Lift it by hand to get the wood blocks out. <laughs> and there you have it. The culmination of our step-by-step -step process in building the 76 series. I'm elated to witness it all come together. If you've enjoyed the journey as much as we have, subscribing to our channel and hitting that notification bell would mean the world to us. Trust me, you won't want to miss the next one. It is the big reveal of the whole system. So stay tuned and see you soon. Coming up in the next episode. We're just doing the finishing touches. This thing is gonna go on a trip. It's the first time we've built an interior for a car. This is uh, how it turned out. Come and have a look. It's in with the JW Speaker H4 Direct Fit Globes. Gas struts for the bonnet, because Verena is not the tallest person in the world, so she can actually lift the bonnet up. So this whole area will be covered when we're out camping. What we've also did with our bar...